Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a pixel explosion effect like this one very, very quickly and very, very easily inside Photoshop. To get started with our pixel explosion effect, I've selected an image from a site called unsplash.com where you can find copyright free images to use. The first thing I'm going to do is to click here on this icon, this lock icon, to turn the background layer into a regular layer. And then I'm going to drag this layer onto the new icon to make a copy of it. This is going to be my background here, and this is going to be my isolated subject. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of the background layer so I can see just this layer that I'm working with. I'm going to start with here the quick selection tool. I'm just going to drag over her face and body. Because what I want to do is to isolate her from her background. So I'm just making sure I have a reasonably good selection here. Now I've missed out a bit of her hair here. And I'm also missing her eyelashes. And because the pixel explosion effect is over this side, it doesn't matter to me now if I just add her eyelashes in. So I've selected the lasso tool here. I'm holding the shift key. I'm just dragging over to add her eyelashes. So that's going to be in the final image. And if I wanted to, I could also drag a little bit extra here knowing that I'm not going to use this hair area for the pixel explosion effect. I'm going to check the selection I have right now by choosing Select and then Refine Edge. I've got this selected against a black background because I'm aware that I'm likely to get a sort of haloing effect here, which is what I've got. It's a contamination of the background in the area that I've made a selection of. Now I can probably fix that by just shifting the edge here a bit. I've probably gone a bit too far. So I'm just looking for a good value here for shifting this edge to reduce this contamination. I want to output to selection, so I'm just going to click OK. Now I have a selection of her. I want to keep her and discard the background, so I need to invert this selection. Select Inverse, and I'm just going to press Delete. And now she's isolated from the background with the exception of a couple of little places here, which is not going to be affected by the effect that I'm creating. I still have my selection in place, so now I'm going to turn her layer off. I'm going to turn the bottom layer on and just focus on what I have here. Right now I have the background selected because that's what I deleted a minute ago. But this time what I want to do is to delete her. So I'm going to choose Select Inverse. And now she is selected and the background isn't. I'm going to use Content Aware Fill to fill in this area. So I don't want a really tight selection around her. I want it to be much looser. So I'm going to choose Select and then Modify and then Expand because I want to expand this selection somewhat. And I know from experience I'm going to need to expand it by about somewhere between 100 and 150 pixels. So I'm just going to click OK. And now you'll see that the selection grows considerably. And now when I press Delete, I would remove her entirely from this image. But what I really want to do is to fill the spot with the background. So I'm going to choose Edit, Fill, and I'm going to choose from this list here, Content Aware, and just click OK. And she'll be deleted and the background will be stretched out and used to fill in the space that she took up. That's what Content Aware in Photoshop does. So now I can press Control or Command D to deselect the selection. So I have a nice background and I have my model here. I need a second version of my model, so I'm just going to take this layer and just drag and drop it onto this new layer icon. So I have one background and two models. Now I'm going to turn off the visibility of my top layer and I'm going to focus on this middle layer because this is going to be the content that we use to actually fill with the exploded pixels. So we need to stretch her and to make up some color that uses the colors from her in this area of the image. So the first thing I'm going to do is just select over her. I'm going to drag. Now this is something you would never do to an image. But it's fine in this situation because what we want to do is to get these colors out here. So I'm just going to click the check mark. There are other things that I could do. I could use 
edit and then transform and then warp. And I could warp this shape to fill in this area by stretching it quite considerably. You can use the liquify filter as well. The other thing you can do is just hit it with the clone stamp tool. I'm going to click here on the clone stamp. I'm going to choose a really large brush. I'm going to Alt or Option click on an area to select it. I'm just going to paint it out. Because all we're looking at doing here is creating pixels that are going to be underneath a brush later on that are going to pick up and create this effect as if her head is exploding into pixels across to the side of her face. So all I'm doing here is just creating color that we can pick up a little bit later on. Now I know I want to use some color around here because I want to explode some of these up in this direction. So I'm just going to add some color in here. And again, it just doesn't matter what you do to her head at this point because you're just creating pixels to use later on. Let's put her real head back into position. Well, I think that this one is not really quite the right size. So I'm just going to size it down a little bit and perhaps move it over a little bit. I'm only concerned about the colours behind her head. We're not going to be using this piece of her at all. So I'll just click the check mark. Now we need to add our masks. And on this middle layer, we're going to create a black filled mask. We do that by holding the Alt or Option key and clicking this icon, which is the Add a Layer Mask icon. And you can see that thankfully now that entirely warped face that wasn't looking too good has been removed. Let's go to this top layer and we're just going to click to add a mask. No Alt or Option key at this stage because we want this one to be white filled. And now we're going to create our pixelated effect. And we're going to do that by painting black onto this mask and white onto this mask. And we need a brush to do it with. So I'm just going to click here on the brush tool. We're going to go and get a brush. Now, last time I did this, I used a size six brush. I'm just going to choose a different brush because I want to show you how to set this up. You could use brushes like this, the dotted brush. You could use any sort of pixelated brush that you can find anywhere. But you can also use a hard square brush, which is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to show you how to set it up. So with this brush selected, I'm going to click here on the brush panel. And what I'm going to do, first of all, on the brush tip shape is increase the size a little bit. And I'm going to increase the spacing so that this brush is going to paint like this, not like a solid line. Then I'm going to click on Shape Dynamics and click here to make some adjustments. I want the brush to change size, so I'm going to use a size jitter. I want the minimum diameter to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to increase the angle jitter so that this is going to paint not only as square pixels, but also be rotated around so it looks like a diamond shape. If I wanted to, I could also apply a roundness jitter, but I don't want that. I'm going to click on Scattering and select scattering so I can now adjust the scattering value and can see that now I can push these little squares so they're painting off at angles. I can do that on both axes or just one axis. I could increase the count jitter if I wanted to, but I don't really think I want to do that. I think I'm just going to paint a little bit more of this than have the brush itself paint multiple times. If you spend a little bit of time adjusting the brush like this, you won't actually have to adjust the brush much as you actually paint with it because it doesn't look like a repeated painting job. So let's go and get the brush. Going back to the layers palette, I'm going to select this white mask here and I'm going to paint on it with black. So I'm going to make sure I have black selected. You need to make sure that your mask has this little border around it, which tells you that you're painting on the mask and not on the face itself. We've got our brush. Don't think it's big enough. So I'm just going to press the open and close square bracket keys to just increase it in size. And let's just start painting with it. What we're doing is we're trying to remove part of her head to suggest that these pixels are being taken from her head and exploded out the back. So I'm just going to paint over here. You can adjust the size of the brushes you paint to make it bigger or smaller because I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I'm using perhaps a slightly bigger brush than you may want to use. I do want to make sure that I get rid of some of this sort of 
edge to her head so that it becomes a little bit less obvious where the pixelated effect takes place and where the edge of the image actually was. I'm going to come in here with a few extra pixels that I can explode out. So once I've got the pixels removed from her head, I can start looking at the pixels that I want to explode out the back, and they're here. So I'm going to click here on this mask, make sure it's got the little border around it. I'm going to switch my colors because I want to paint with white now instead of black. And I'm just going to start painting in here. And you can see that as I paint, I'm getting this pixelated effect appearing. As if the pixels were being removed from the side of her face and her shoulder and being exploded out here. Now the color of the pixels that I'm painting on here is determined by the image underneath. And I want to get a little bit of suggestion that stuff's happening out the top here as well. But you can continue to work on this as you wish with your own image. Or you can download this image from unsplash.com and use it to create the effect with. You can always switch between these two masks. Click on this mask, change color of course, and then you can start working on removing some additional pixels if you wish. If you see that there are pixels there that you don't want to have in place and you want to explode different ones out. If you want to, it is also possible to add a drop shadow to the pixels that have been exploded out of her head. To do that, click on this layer and choose the FX icon here and click Drop Shadow. Now you won't want a very heavy drop shadow, so I'm going to turn mine around to be about 135 degrees, which is a nice angle. I'm going to decrease the opacity quite a bit. Just watch here and you can see what size and what spread do to your drop shadow. So you want to adjust probably the size rather than the spread. And let's just increase that opacity a little bit and click OK. And then we can check the effect with and without this drop shadow by clicking on the effects icon. And you may prefer it with or without the drop shadow. It's up to you to decide what you want for your particular illustration. But there's the exploding pixel effect created inside Photoshop. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this Photoshop video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you can find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.